hello i am uh, dr lalit chimpi uh, i am a gastroenterologist and uh, hepatologist uh, practicing in pune and uh, uh, i am attached as the chief therapeutic endoscopy head at uh, jahangir hospital uh, in pune and at uh, dinanath mangeshkar hospital in pune so today we'll be discussing a few things about uh, drug induced liver injury per se drug induced liver injury is fairly common and uh, nearly all classes of medications including um, allopathic medicines or medicines belonging to other pathies can also cause uh, liver disease uh, information about drug induced liver disease is limited mostly to uh, single center reports or there are a few reviews now which are there on the uh, the net and uh, in literature and uh, there are various class of medicines which uh, cause these drug induced liver injury chief amongst them in our country is mostly the anti tubercular drugs which are the most common cause of uh, drug induced liver injury or it as it is called dili in short so i'll refer to drug induced liver injury as in the lecture and the questions and there are other drug uh, groups such as anti epileptic drugs anti metabolites anti retroviral drugs antibiotics which are commonly associated with drug induced liver injury not all most of the drug induced uh, liver injuries are mild and if it is recognized early that some medication is associated with this rise in enzymes or hepatitis kind of illness uh, most of the delays would be mild and if it's recognized early and the drug is stopped the disease does follow a mild course however it's important to remember that about 10 to 15% of all cases of delay can present late or may be undiagnosed or if not diagnosed early and the drug is continued especially then they might progress to acute liver failure and lead to mortality or death so it is important for us to go into details in the history of the patient especially when the patient presents with acute liver failure where the cause or etiology of uh, the liver failure is not known uh, now most of the cases of delay are benign they improve after drug withdrawal but the most important thing as i said is to Uh, remove the offending agent as quickly as possible and uh, start the supportive therapy for the liver there are no particular risk factors for delay but uh, in some cases one has to be little vigilant for example people who have pre existing liver disease those who have uh, an advanced age sometimes women are more prone to developing a hepatic illness uh, which may progress to more severe liver failure and uh, Uh, chronic alcohol consumption is another risk factor so what happens is a lot of these pre existing pathologies predispose to higher toxicity from the drug because many of these drugs are metabolized by the liver itself and uh, if you have altered liver function or you have liver dysfunction many of these metabolites may be more toxic uh, to the liver per se in the west uh, we have lot of data on uh, acetaminophen or paracetamol uh toxicity causing delay and that is in the west the most common cause one reason being that it is available over the counter and uh, uh it is used by people as as an agent for taking overdose uh, with suicidal tendencies but in our uh, country paracetamol poisoning is not very common uh, of course because there are other means and methods what people uh, would uh, rather use and uh, Uh, in our country anti tubercular drugs are still the main cause for uh, delay according to the various uh, literature which is available from uh, from our country why a particular person may develop delay uh, to a particular drug is really not known but obviously there is some genetic factors which predispose uh, these patients to delay and polymorphism in various enzymes which are involved in metabolism of drugs especially the cytochrome p450 enzymes they can uh, lead to more genetic susceptibility to patients developing delay and there may be some role of hla antigen phenotype especially in idiosyncratic or immune mediated reactions to drugs depending on the duration and the histology and location of damage drug induced liver injuries can be categorized either as acute or chronic so acute obviously means that uh, there is an acute insult and acute hepatic illness which is many times symptomatic and may lead to acute liver failure while you have another subset which may uh, cause drug induced liver injury over more chronic time 
and especially with drugs which are used for other chronic diseases uh, as far as the histological types of delia are considered there are three main types one is the hepatic uh, type or a hepatic pattern where you have raised uh, transaminases development of jaundice symptoms the other type is if you have a cholestatic kind of drug induced injury and the third type is somewhere you where you develop a mixed pattern of injury uh, so we'll come to that uh, a bit later when we discuss uh, the different types of injury and the different patterns of injury in more uh, detail but it's my suffice to say that uh, hepatic illness is something which leads to hepatocyte damage and uh, predominantly an elevation of uh, alt ast and the liver enzymes and uh, uh, the alkaline phosphatase levels are generally not very elevated if you have a cholestatic hepatitis then it refers to delhi where you have cholestasis on histology and uh, rise in the alkaline phosphatase as far as the liver functions are uh, concerned and symptoms such as pruritus which are more predominantly cholestatic symptoms and the third injury as i said is uh, predominantly can be a, a mixed type so typically hepatic illnesses or hepatitis like injury can come with various directly hepatotoxic drugs and many of these are as we know are anti tubercular agents many of the anti epileptic agents some anti hypertensive agents many of the cams or the complementary and alternative uh, medications uh, we get a lot of hepatic illness cholestasis is more common with drugs such as uh, estrogen progesterone combinations or anabolic steroids sometimes with uh, antibiotic combinations such as amoxicillin clavulinate sometimes these give rise to a cholestatic kind of illness there are other types or varieties of histologies also for example one might get uh, steatotic illness especially in uh, drugs for example like tetracycline or with amiodarone and you can get also fibrotic kind of pattern uh, for example with drugs like methotrexate so it's important to go into the history and see what kind of drug the Uh, patient was taking and what kind of uh, injury symptomatically as well as histologically the patients are uh, presenting with most of the patients uh, a majority of the delhi who have acute illnesses generally uh, as i mentioned earlier will resolve quite quickly after the offending medications is stopped so generally within a matter of days or a week or two most of the times the transaminases will come back to normal and uh, the symptoms will improve once the agent has been identified and it has stopped but some patients do uh, develop symptoms very typical of any other form of hepatitis for example uh, patients may develop fatigue nausea malaise which may progress to jaundice uh, if the offending agent is not stopped and then you can get uh, more severe uh, kind of symptoms sometimes patients do present with abdominal pain or a painful hepatomegaly which is caused by a drug induced hepatic illnesses if you have certain immunological mechanisms which are responsible for example drug hypersensitivity uh, you may have uh, patients who come with rash or fever and if you do their blood counts you can get uh, eosinophilia so it's a very simple kind of test to see whether dili is responsible for raised transaminases if your hemogram shows eosinophilia that could be a hypersensitivity kind of phenomena or you have things like sweet syndrome where uh, you have uh, neutrophilia which is seen uh, along with uh, fever and uh, painful rash so uh, clinical features do help us in finding out uh, what could be the cause and what is the severity as far as management is concerned uh, although most patients uh, are identical to uh, other liver diseases some of them presents with as i said symptoms of hypersensitivity and these may be uh, treated with supportive care for the liver antioxidants glutathione uh, acid inositol methionine many of these have a basic antioxidant and cell membrane stabilizing properties and these agents can help in addition of course to stopping the offending drug which is the first step that needs to be done if there is some element of drug hypersensitivity which is there then uh, a short course of steroids especially if the patient is having a prolonged course and it and the transaminases are not really coming down or if there is a cholestatic uh, kind of picture uh, in addition to evidence that there is a systemic hypersensitivity then uh, we can treat these patients with uh, a short course of corticosteroids and uh, they may help so most cases would resolve on their own and management is generally uh, supportive if the patients do progress to more severe acute liver failure 
or they go on to developing a severe coagulopathy or encephalopathy then they are obviously candidates where you might consider liver transplantation as a final treatment for their acute liver failure caused by uh, drug induced liver injury